So WASH stands for Water, Sanitation and Hygiene. Those are really basic foundations for children to grow, to be healthy and to thrive. Uh, obviously, we all need water, we all need clean water. Uh, probably more important, we all need good sanitation. We spend a lot of time thinking about all the food that goes into us. There's a huge multinational industry providing food for everybody. But nobody thinks about what comes out at the other end. But yet, you know, one gram of human feces can contain a billion microbes. So those are the things that can cause diarrheal disease, biggest killer of one of the biggest killers of children today. They can cause helminth infections, parasite infections, respiratory tract infections, infections in kids who are ill for some other reason are likely to fall sick if they come into contact with feces. And then of course people who've been to the toilet and don't wash their hands afterwards, they've come into contact with feces too. So hygiene is incredibly important. Hygiene is the way in which behavior stops me transmitting the diseases that I have to you through my own behavior. So water, sanitation and hygiene, really fundamental to child health. The wash is commonly thought of as being about investing in water supply infrastructure, for example, investing in toilets, for example. And of course, those are really important. But what, what people do is build their own toilets, mostly. Almost all of the toilets there are in the world today were not built by public provision, but by people's own hands. And that's behavior. They have decided that is something that they want. So one of the things that's really important for WASH practitioners to know how to do is to encourage people to change their behavior, encourage them maybe to treat, treat their water supply, encourage them to build toilets, and when they've built them, use them, and to make sure that, for example, child feces get put in the toilet, because if they're left around, they're highly infectious and are likely to cause, um, of course, further disease. And then, of course, if people don't wash their hands with soap after going to the toilet, that is a super highway for the transmission of infection as well. A, somewhat, a recent review we did suggests that somewhere less than 17% of people in the world today wash their hands with soap after the toilet. So we have a huge behavior change task ahead of us for people in this country, for people in every country in the world. Hygiene behaviors are suboptimal and they need to be improved. So when we want to change behavior in public health, what I'm afraid most people do is they start lecturing you and they say, whoa, you dirty person, don't you know you're stupid? Don't you, you'll get sick if you don't wash your hands with soap, for example. Well, well, this just doesn't work. To start with, everybody knows already that hand washing is good for them, it's good for their health. The problem is they don't do it. It's not that they don't know, they don't do it. So how do you find strong levers that get people out of these habits they have, their everyday habits, the normal things they do every day, and actually make them want to do something different? It's a really difficult challenge. But what we can do is harness people's own instincts. So all of us have an instinct to be revolted by things that are nasty. We all have a strong disgust emotion. So if I show you a plastic turd, a poo, you'll go, ugh, that's revolting. So what we try and do is make people feel disgusted by feces. One of the tricks that uh, people working on community level uh, community-led total sanitation use is to uh, go on a, a walk around the village and see where the feces have been deposited and then take a hair and dip it into the feces and then ask for a glass of water and dip that into the glass of water and then say, here's a glass of water, would you like to drink it? And of course what happens, people go, oh that is so disgusting. It leads to a collective realization that poo is something we do not want in our village. It's shameful, it's embarrassing, it's not something we're proud of and it's revolting, disgusting. Uh, and that can trigger a whole village to want to start building toilets for, for everybody. Uh, same with hand washing. If you do this simple exercise, you say, well, <laughs> smell what your hands are like after the toilet. You know, maybe, maybe they smell all right, but maybe you imagine that they smell disgusting because you're highlighting how disgusting it is to have touched feces and then not washed your hands with soap afterwards. So that's a powerful, we call those emodemos, they're powerful emotional demonstrations, which actually we've shown are very effective in getting people to change their behavior. In theory, at least, if everybody in the world, as I believe they should have, has access to plentiful clean water, has a toilet somewhere where they can defecate safely, where feces are removed properly from the environment, and if everybody washed their hands with soap afterwards, in theory, there would be no more transmission of infections from feces to humans. That's called fecal oral transmission. Uh, feces getting into the environment, getting into foods, getting onto surfaces, getting onto flies, 
uh, and, then, and then getting into a child and making them sick. So we could remove diarrheal diseases completely, which is a major cause of death in the world today. Uh, on top of that, we could reduce stunting and malnutrition. Uh, I saw a study recently in Vietnam that showed that villages that had good access to sanitation compared to villages that didn't, children on average were 3.7 centimeters taller. And I was trying to think, what does 3.7 centimeters mean? And I realized I was wearing a pair of shoes that were actually 3.7 centimeters high. Now, I mean, these aren't 3.7 centimeters high, but you know, effectively, toilets can give you high heels. They can actually lead to children being as tall as if they were wearing high heels. So sanitation, hygiene, and water, they're foundations for good health. Uh, they're essential for everybody, and they can lead to children growing well, getting less sick, and thriving, uh, and succeeding better in life.